This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Now then, back in about 1988, I discovered a new, as he was to me then, guitar player. Chap by the name of Robin Ford. He was all over all of the guitar press, all of the magazines, uh, plugging his new album called Talk to Your Daughter. And uh, I liked what I read, so I, uh, the earliest opportunity, rushed down to the local record emporium and uh, bought the album without he having heard a single note of music imagine doing that these days um so anyway one of the um standout tracks on the talk to your daughter album is robin's version of the old bb king tune uh help the poor and i've always loved the uh, the solo on that song for me it uh, it epitomizes robin's approach of using some quite complex sounding ideas but still managing to make it sound like blues without it becoming overtly jazzy. So what we're doing today is taking a look at the solo and hopefully demonstrating that it is not as scary to tackle as you might have thought. Here's the solo and a brief explanation. Right then, as always, we shall begin with the chord sequence. There it is on the screen, and this is what it sounds like. Something like that. It basically goes twice through that and then ends up going to G minor 7. Now, uh, maybe you're interested in playing some of those chords. Uh, if you are, there are the shapes right there on screen. And I will do a printer-friendly version of those chord shapes uh, for my Patreon sub subscribers. Thank you very much, everyone. Now, the thing I want to get across here is don't be scared of those chords. Like, for instance, A7, sharp 5, sharp 9, this one. That is not a scare, as scary a chord as you think. Um, let's analyse what's going on there in that chord, because this will help you understand how to play over it without getting the book of obscure scales off the shelf. Um Basically, uh, Robin and many kind of jazzy blues players will tend to take a seventh chord, like A7, like that. Let's turn it around. And slim it down so that you're only playing the root note, usually with a thumb. Robin certainly does anyway. Then the major third, so you're getting those two notes, and then the flat seventh, like that. That is a typical kind of blues or jazz blues um, seventh chord kind of thing. That kind of thing. Then all we're doing to get this extra part of it, the sharp five, sharp nine thing, is, well, we're in the key of D minor here. 
okay so d minor pentatonic is going to be the order of the day as we shall see shortly and there's a d minor pentatonic and you can see if i take that a7 shape and add this f note and this c note that are in that d minor pentatonic then you get that um, rather spicy sounding chord so all that's happening here all that, that we're getting when we're creating these kind of jazzy sounding chords is you're taking the A7 chord and you're adding in some of the notes from the surrounding chords um, and the, you know the chord sequence and the scale that you're using over the top of it which in this case is mainly D minor pentatonic and that gives you, you know, a chord that's, um, that looks like it's, uh, you know, essentially quantum physics, basically. It's not, it's just, you know, an A7 chord with some notes added in from the, from the overall environment. And that sort of informs how you're going to play over those chords. And we'll come to that in a little bit. Um, the majority of this solo is uh, just simple blues ideas. Uh, we've got a D minor pentatonic, you know, in various guises. This one here. This one here. And sometimes the lower extension of that. Like that. Okay. Um, and one or two other patterns as well. Um, so that's the, the bones of what's going on and into that he's uh, every now and again adding the old flat fifth blue note kind of thing so instead of you know you'll get that kind of thing adding the flat fifth there which is uh, an A flat and you know there it is there and the first lick in the solo um, is a good kind of um, way to view all of that in action. He's also adding in the ninth as well, the E note into the minor pentatonic. There's your flat fifth. Like that. So adding in just a couple of passing notes. And as I say, the first lick in the solo is a really good um, microcosm of, of all of that sort of stuff that's going on. I'll play it slowly. Here it is. Just turn the guitar's volume up a bit. It goes... There's the first part of it, and that's coming straight out of uh, pattern four. Here it is again. Like that, just straight ahead pentatonic lick, nothing to be scared of there. And then we move down into pattern three of the D minor pentatonic. And we add in the ninth, the E note here, and we go slide back up to the D note there. A little bit sort of Chuck Berry that there, coming off the the D note there on the second string and sliding it up to up to it on the uh, third string, you know, for that sort of Johnny B. Good lick. That kind of thing. So, you know, bending the ninth up to the F, the E up to the F. That's the lick. Then back down into pattern three of the pentaton. So, there's your flat fifth. So that entire beginning lick goes. Something like that. Um, and that really does tell the story of the, the rest of the solo, for the most part, really. Um, he then kind of comes up to... That uh, area of the D minor pentatonic here, so, you know, pattern one, with its kind of lower extension down into the bottom end of pattern five. As I say, a couple of occasions where he adds in the ninth, uh, like that. There's the, the, the minor third that's in the minor pentatonic, and there's the ninth, which is the E note, and as I say, a few times where he's going up to that flattened fifth there for that kind of lick so that really does take care of a lot of the solo but it's the jazzy licks that really give this solo its um you know its identity and as i said earlier you can look at uh the, the kind of jazzier stuff that's going on here as 
you know, some obscure mode of the melodic minor scale or something like that. But um, I think it's just easier to view them as being, you know, D minor licks with the notes from the A7 chords added in, because that is usually the chord where he's going to be doing it. So if we take a look at this lick... <laughs> that lick there which happens in the second half of the solo uh, here it is again there so what's going on there well we've got we're starting on a b flat note which is from a d minor scale like d natural minor this time b flat there it is there. Um, then coming off just to a pentatonic note, the A, the A note there. And then, then you go in kind of B flat, C, C sharp. Then, you can see what I'm doing here, like that lick there. Is just pure D minor pentatonic. And then he lands on this C sharp note here, which is from the A7 chord. Then a G note there, which is in the A7 chord and the D minor pentatonic. Sliding down the D, C to B flat, and then resolving onto that A note there. So here's the lick once again. That's a lick, and you can, really speaking, you can view it as just being some D minor pentatonic notes or D minor scale notes with notes of the um, A7 chord added in. And, you know, you get that wonderful jazzy sound with it. Um, the other place where he tends to step outside of the um, D minor pentatonic is when we have this um, G7 to B flat 7 chord coming in. Now, that B flat 7th chord contains the A flat note, okay, which is our, if you remember, the flat 5th of the uh, minor pentatonic scale. So, like, there's a lick somewhere in the solo when he's playing over that um, B flat 7 chord where he takes the, uh, the D note here, which is in D minor pentatonic, and the B flat 7 chord and bends it up a sem uh, three semitones to the F note. And then there's your B flat note there from the B flat seven. And then landing on the, um, the A flat note, which is also in the B flat seventh. So you can see how, if you have a knowledge of what notes are in chords and where those notes are on the neck, it really cuts down the amount of work you've got to do. You don't have to, as I said earlier, get that, um, you know, that obscure book of scales off the shelf and start learning unfamiliar new patterns. You can just think, well, I'm in D minor, so I'll use D minor pentatonic. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I've got this chord coming up now, which has these notes in it. And I can look down at the neck and see where they are and play them. Um, you know, time invested in learning your fretboard is, um, you know, time well spent because as you can see, it allows you to play all of this fancy sounding stuff amongst other things. So there you go. That's a brief analysis of um, the Help the Poor solo by Robin Ford. Have some fun with it. And you will, of course, find a full tab in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats for that solo, along with that clip that you've just seen there of me playing and explaining the solo, and a jam track to play along with. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the link, there's the address rather, and the link is in the description. It's only $3 a month, and you get all of these additional resources that go along with these YouTube videos. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who is supporting me, me in that way, or any 
of the other ways that are all linked down in the description box below. So that's pretty much it for today folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful, informative and maybe a little bit inspiring and if you have please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and that way you'll never miss another video like this and while you're there why not give me a like while you're at it. But for now I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves folks. Stay well, stay safe and above all stay sane. Bye for now.